All right, today is December 10th. This is the DevSync. Uh, special guest uh, is uh, Kevin. He's been doing all of our hardware work. Uh, he'll be listening in. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and, um, well, you know, to be honest, we were having a conversation about uh, some of the last tweaks to the hardware that we're making. So why don't we just continue that conversation? Um, so uh, we were talking about the uh, the fan placement, one of the the final uh, eyes to dot or T's to cross uh, on on the uh, dev kits, um, and uh, so Derek, um, you said you wanted to mount it directly to the CPU. Uh, uh, yeah, with a like a heatsink fan combo, just directly on the CPU uh, with like a. A 25 millimeter square, just a little, a little fan, um, but that's not very big, and you know it's maybe not, it's good for cooling the CPU directly. But you know, you, meant, you mentioned that the SJ201 itself has maybe some need for cooling as well, so it might not, might not be the most ideal for that. Yeah, I mean theoretically, but, uh, the SJ201 draws a lot more power than the Raspberry Pi because of the amplifiers and the XMOS chip and everything else. So, right. um, yeah, and I, like I said, I was notice, noticing it getting uh, pretty warm to the touch uh, and a, a very low flow uh, fan uh, cooled it down significantly. So that was that was my thinking there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think I had the same conclusion that Josh had. Uh, I actually sent Derek a picture of just that, Josh, of using that, the, the hole on, on this side of the, device and just putting four mounting holes on that and um you know okay. then you can stick a fan the, on the inside or the outside yeah the, 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 use a shorter ribbon dsi ribbon well the the only question if we do put it on this side is is to make sure that we have enough space for the fan between the inside of the case and the yeah and the audio chamber but it looks it looks like we do and so we could just tweak this last shape and Derek needs to make a change well we don't need to but I mean since we're doing another rev anyway it's my preference that this be assemblable in only one configuration because right now a couple parts are reversible and you could act, you could put the for instance the front plate could be reversed and the left and the right can be reversed so rather than then do it like it'd be great if if just by design there was only one way to make it into a box so we, we just need to tweak some of these tabs yeah yeah i agree um, with that guys was saying isn't that that access panel was or that access hole was intended to be able to to reach in and get to the uh sd card and the uh, dsi cable although you can assemble it if you do it correct you know the right order you don't need to uh to access it that way, you can just you know assemble it on the front and then plug it into the Pi before you put the you know case, the final uh, case together. Um, so I don't think that's that big a deal. And you know if we're using we're pretty committed to using USB, so I um, I think that's that's okay too. We can put it off. We can still leave maybe a little bit of access there for I don't know tweezers or pliers. I was also just thinking about the like the the cable. You know, the bigger the cable that there is, the more that it's going to like impede airflow of, of you know, from the fan. So like, oh right, you know what I mean? Yeah, we might need to think of so a way potentially to potentially, if we, yeah, if we cut down to a 100 mil cable or something like that, then uh, it might just make it a bit. Oh, I mean, given the size of the fan that we're talking about and the, you know, the open nature of most of this case, I don't think that's really. There's nothing really blocking it. I measured you can get a 40 by 40 by 10 millimeter fan inside the enclosure if you didn't want to mount it to the outside. It'll fit with the current design of the uh, audio chamber and and clearances and whatnot. So we're talking about air flowing from like from one side to the other, right? Like yeah, more or less sideways. Yeah, like, basically, I want to get flow across the surface of the SJ201. Yeah, and so what I'm saying is that, like, you know, if you've got this ribbon that's sitting here and you mm -hmm. like bolt a fan to the outside, then it's got the it's, it's directly pushing against the ribbon oh. or pulling against the ribbon. Mine's mine's well, we've not actually, mounted like that. Mine mine yeah. works like this. Uh, it's a lot more clear. We've changed it up. Yeah, we've changed it up a little bit, guys. You've got a. Ah, uh, okay, right, right. Yeah. All right. 
Ignore me then. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, some fun little insight into the world of hardware design. Um, that brings me a question I had about all this was, you know, are any of these changes uh, fundamental enough that we should have, that those of us that have laser cut enclosures should get um, newer versions or are these more just cosmetic you, things that aren't you, you will get newer versions as soon as we have it settled. I will put a flat pack on them and ship them to everybody. Um, one of the things I need everybody to do is assemble one. Um, you know, uh, Michael's direction was they'd be able to do it with nothing but a screwdriver. Um, Derek and I had a discussion yesterday. I think it's unlikely that that's going to be possible. Um, even I've, I'm pretty dexterous, and I have trouble getting those nuts in those slots. I need to use a pair of needle nose pliers to put the nuts in. So it, we're, they're probably going to need a pair of needle nose pliers and a screwdriver or a pair of tweezers. But, I mean, you could do it with just a screwdriver if you had teeny tiny fingers, you know, but I, I, yeah. But anyway, I need everybody to build them so that so that if the instructions suck, we can fix them. Yeah, I've come up with some methods that you can do it, like the way you hold it and stuff. But it's it's a little tricky. So, but it's, I mean, it's doable. Yeah, I've put mine. I've put together. Yeah, but it would cost pulled and pulled, put together mine a, a few times now. So, you, like, you kind of get better at it the more the more you do it, and it's. The, the order of operations and, and how you hold the case as you like, as you, you know, hold the nut in and, and all that sort of stuff. So if there's a way that we can improve that, then great. But yeah, I, yeah. Oh, hey, that reminds me, are we insetting all of the nuts into the plastic with a soldering iron? Well, Josh and I talked about that um, yesterday too. And the idea would be, yes, that would be included with our, um, Okay. Our kitting uh, assembly process. So um, we would not put that on the end user. Okay. Yeah. So we have to we have to add that to our uh, kitting process. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Mo, can, I can Mo can do them on the the ones that are that she's making, but the uh, as part of the process, which you know I'm comfortable with, but the laser cut company, whoever's doing the laser cutting, probably won't have that ability. Yeah. I, I think that's something that our, you know, assembly partner can handle. Um, right. I've got a I've got a patent attorney in seven minutes, so I'm going to talk. Lee Chang reached out and wants to talk, and I don't know if that's good news or bad news, so we'll see. Okay. But um, if I can if I can go first, that would be great. Uh, okay, let's go. go so I I. All right. So um. So I built this one yesterday, photographed the entire process. It works out really well. Like these are the, the way this audio chamber is set in here with Derek's new tabs. It's rock solid with the, the, uh, the rubber insulators in there. Even with the rubber isolators in there, it's great. Um, so these are the flat pack stuff is in pretty darn good shape and we're pretty happy with it. We've come up with suppliers for pretty much everything. Um, we're still tweaking the last few things. All of the major parts are on order. Um, you know, there is a little bit of who knows because of the Christmas season uh, and the, the delays in shipping, but um, we appear to be in, in really good shape to get these out the door. The, I think that the limiting factor is going to be the SJ201s. Um, our goal would be to have everything else totally 1000% done, having everybody already assembled these uh, by, you know, all the team doing building one themselves so that we can get feedback on the process and have all the parts in a kit ready to go. And when the SJ-201s roll in from, from wherever they're being manufactured, you know, we would test them, shove them in a the kit and get them in the mail. So we're, we're, we're in pretty good shape on that side of things. Um, I also ran a, a little informal economic analysis on the Mark one where we spent, $25,000 on molds and only made 2,500 units, meaning that the mold non-recurring cost per unit is $10, right? And then we paid a couple bucks each for each piece for the plastics. Um, you know, looking at that in the context of the Mark II, it may make sense for us to, to 3D print the Mark IIs in bulk for um, some of the early users. And um, we may, because that manufacturing process is gonna be a little different, uh, it may make sense to have the folks who are willing to take a 3D printed enclosure um, move to the front of the line for shipment. And then, uh, you know, folks who want to wait for an injection molded enclosure would move to the back of the line. Um, so that's something that we're we're talking about and considering. 
All right, thanks. Um, so yes, let's we'll go backwards today. Uh, yeah, I um, helped Derek a bit with uh, with some <laughs> Linux fun uh, and networking stuff, um, uh, some marketing stuff, which which you know is a, an unfortunate necessity of running a business, but it's not really what I want to spend my time doing. Um, and uh, and then the rest of the day was focused on um, tweeting Ken stuff so that um, we have it configurable. Um, since I've only got the, the Rev3 still, I wanted to, to get that um, configurable from uh, config parameters. Uh, and and then building the the Rev4 requirements into the, the current DevOps recipe so we can we can test that out. Um, a bit more easily uh, today, I will be um, testing out. Yeah, trying trying to get that working on the on the Rev three, um, and uh, yeah, getting back to Pandacore and and making sure they're ready for the uh, for the demo tomorrow morning. Um, yeah. Okay. Do you do you have an update on uh, the current state of the Pantacore image building process? Is it are they able to, you know, repeatedly build images that are getting incrementally better, or are we kind of stuck on anything? Or yeah, there was uh, some regressions with the with the audio permissions, but I think they've been sorted out. Um, I haven't tested this morning yet, um, but yeah, they are incrementally getting better. Um, it's they they hadn't had any of the the extra SJ two hundred one stuff in there yet, so it was all you know based on um, USB, you know having having sound devices available by USB. So um, all the Rev four stuff should be in there by now, I would think. Um, but I have to go check where they got to overnight. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's still your very early morning for you. So I get it. Uh, okay, thanks. Um, Derek, how are things going? Hey all. Um, so yeah, uh, we kind of talked a little bit about hardware stuff. Um, balancing some of that plus um, ordering. Uh, Chris, I'm working with Chris Adair on ordering. Um, she's mostly doing it, but you know, she has some, anytime she needs to clarify something, um, she's been coming to me. Uh, so that's been going well. Um, I think with the latest things, we got the DSI cables um, moving, and we're still uh, waiting for the cameras. Um, but I think we've got that figured out, um, and heat sinks, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then the rest of the time, I was just kind of working with with Ken on trying to get uh, the SJ two hundred ones I have up and going. Um, and I, I'm just seeing some funky stuff outside of the, the image itself that um, I'm not sure what was up. Like Gez mentioned, he helped me a little bit yesterday with networking stuff. Um, it appears the, I cannot get Wi-Fi to work properly um, on this build, and I'm not sure where that's coming from. It um, could, could have been present for a while and might have something specific to do with my network setup, setup I don't know. Um, but it works fine um, on Ethernet. But uh, on Wi-Fi, I can ping things. I can, you know, it gets a, get an, a, uh, an IP address assigned to it, and I can hit the internet. But I can't uh, SSH into it, and I um, don't don't know what's causing that. So uh, yeah, then we just we were trying to get uh, we got everything to work but the mic. Um, so we've got the buttons working, we've got audio output working, uh, we've got LEDs working, but um, yeah, the mic mic is uh, isn't working right now. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, yeah, so so that's where we're at with that. And I think uh, for the the remainder of today, I'd like to, Ken gave me one last uh, thing to try, so I'll, I'll give that a shot. And um, then I'm going to try and get these updates that Josh has requested on the laser cut design done. OK, great. Um, yeah, so yeah, OK, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, Chris Vare. 
Sure, today has not been a particularly productive day for me. My wife and I are, are starting to prepare for my my daughter's 18th birthday on Saturday. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of a big deal going on in my household. Um, I have, I did a little bit more work um, on the document as, with, as far as uh, uh, the agreements uh, information and maybe splitting it into some other ones. I also read through, Chris um, had, a, had a pass at it. Um, I read through some of those things. So I, Michael, I don't know if that makes, I don't think there's anything materially different, <laughs> at least from um, you know, what we came up with, but um, might be worth making sure that we're all on the same page with that. Um, and I've started uh, looking at getting some JIRA tickets to find for, um, for the work on um, the new account membership stuff. And once I get that done, um, I'll start the work. So hopefully tomorrow. Okay, great. Well, um, yeah, I mean, it's important to celebrate important milestones like this. So totally understand. Um, and congratulations. I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> Any reasonable dowry offers yet? <laughs> He is lucky that the drinking age is 21 now, right? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> the legal drinking age, although yeah, there are exemptions for it to college, but that, you know, it's, it's it's a good thought. <laughs> there are exemptions for uh, for religious purposes and uh, in your own home uh, in a lot of places as well. So, with adult supervision. So anyway, um, which is of course the way all kids want to do that, right? So anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, Ken. All right, so I'm working on the Mark IV or the uh, SG201 Rev 4 for the Mark II and um, other than the microphones, everything's working fine. Uh, <laughs> other, than, other than recording, so <laughs> which isn't really that important a function for- a wait, a second, wait a second, wait a second. Yeah, I thought you had recording working before. Yeah, so uh recording has been um an issue and i don't think it's hardware uh, i believe it to be software configuration of some sort but uh, it was one of the earliest uh, concerns i had when i first unpacked it and got it running if you go back and look at my first emails to kevin it's like it doesn't record and um yeah i just like late last night i thought i had it nailed um my devices my two qt images that i'll boot will you know, work fine and record fine. Uh, but I do have some issues on the newer one uh, regarding using the A record command line. Um, and, uh, you know, it was working and then sometimes I booted, it's not. So, so the bottom line is I just don't know what's going on there. I'll work with Kevin in the morning on a fresh QT install and he can possibly hook up scopes and see what's going on uh, and we'll see what's cooking. But yeah um other than <laughs> the microphones everything works great is it uh is the recording aspect um that's that's the opposite of the problem we were having before right we were having trouble with playback before so Correct. that's that's interesting uh but um is it an issue where if it boots up then it's just fine and it stays fine uh or or you know no it's an it issue that out? once i seem to get it working mycroft runs fine um and i don't have to do anything ever again but i'm still early into the problem so okay. like i said it was late last night when i finally thought i had it nailed so both of these work you know uh derek's we couldn't get working so you know i don't know what of the million things i've touched was the important thing and i have to go back and unravel that so uh, after the meeting tonight i'll spend the rest of the night going through that and then uh, give Kevin a couple hours to wake up in the morning, and then we'll go through it step by step and see what we can figure out. But again, I don't think it's a hardware issue. I suspect it's software. I will I will note this though. I inadvertently have left in the USB cable slash uh, Mycroft USB adapter, and since there's no USB now, I noticed I was getting errors in my D message file, uh, and that I and since I removed that, they went away. So whether that had anything to do with it or not, I, I don't know. I, I suspect not, because unless Derek has a USB cable plugged into his too, then you know. But anyway, so I'm still early in the uh, trying to chase down the issue. All right, cool. 
Um, let's see. Um, well, I could uh, I could ask Kevin to give us a quick update, but uh, I know what he's going to say. And <laughs> um, not all of that's uh, necessarily ready for, for public consumption, so we'll talk about that afterwards. Um, let's see. Uh, and as for me, um, you know, I'm I'm just trying to help out with finalizing the hardware uh, stuff. There's a few remaining issues, like there's the the headphones. Uh, turns out we misunderstood how the TI chip works, and the headphone output is not what we thought it was. Um, it's a totally bonkers chip design that has a completely parallel analog pass-through amplifier for some reason. I don't know what that's good for. Um, so uh, Kevin and I have been going back and forth on different ideas on how to get the headphone output to work uh, since we promised that to people. Um, and the uh, there's some other little issues, you know, with uh, parts in, in terms of the, the fan that we discussed earlier and some grommets for um, isolating the, the audio mechanically. Um, so, you know, the, those last little bits and pieces. The PCBA is, the, is a big one. Um, we need to nail down the the final Gerber files so that we can start getting real quotes on the PCBA stuff. Um, and uh, then we, you know, we're going to have to start talking about the test jig uh, so that we can test all the SJ201s when they roll off the line, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, that's what that's where I've been focused in the last day or so. Um, so, any questions? Any any other issues people need to bring up, or any other uh, follow up conversations we need to have? Okay, so um, yeah, Ken and Kevin are going to get together tomorrow, try to get the Rev4 boards uh, software up and running. Um, and um, I will review the uh, the comments that you made, guys. I, I did see those come in uh, in my cursory look as they kind of scrolled by on my notifications. They all looked like reasonable suggestions and or intimations uh, with your questions, but I will, uh, I'll, I'll respond to those uh, as soon as I get uh, a chance to. Um, so, all right, well, we're, we're still in the, uh, in the final throes of trying to get this hardware out. So let's get back to it.